All right, let's go ahead and swipe. So I'm going to touch it gently. And then nice and slowly. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel and thank you so much for stopping by. Today I am painting a tabletop. This is a wooden round that I got at Home Depot. I'm going to be painting it in Molly's swipe style. So this is a bloom swipe, but a different pouring medium. All the details are down in the video description. I'm using Molly's pouring medium recipe, the same uh, palette knife that she uses. So I'm going to be swiping with a cell activator on this wooden tabletop. So in terms of my colors, these are all the colors that I used for my trout bloom vine that I did a few months ago. I loved that color blend that I did. I was doing a rainbow trout, so a very kind of unusual color blend, earthy stuff, but with some magenta in there too, on a white background with a black cell activator. I've got white for the base, then these are all solid paints. I have Payne's Gray, Light Magenta, and uh, Olive Green. So those are mixed with Molly's recipe of the pouring medium, and they're relatively thick, but they're not super, super, super thick. Then I have two metallic paints, which is metallic copper and pearlized dark green. And then I have two this little piggy pigments, which are, I forget what they are. This one's velvet. I think this one is sea glass. This is an interference pigment, shines blue. So it should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get started. Let's make a painting. So this wooden round, it didn't come white, it came this natural wood color. So I started out by spray priming it with some Rust-Oleum white primer. And that way it helps, it helps uh, kind of seal the wood up so that you're not gonna get too many like air bubbles coming out of the wood. And it just, it gives a better finish, especially if you are gonna have a white base having a white color to start with or a light color. That way your wood grain isn't going to show through your light colored paint. But that was a very simple process. But now I'm going to put on the pillow slash the base coat. And I did mix this paint relatively recently. And so it's kind of, it's got a lot of bubbles. So let me, see if I can bang this to get some of the bubbles off, popped. Bang it on my tabletop. <laughs> I don't know how well that's working. It's bringing them to the surface. Let me see if I can pop those with a torch. Nope, too thick to pop right now. That will be okay. Those will continue to rise as we stretch out this pillow. Those bubbles will be much easier to pop. I don't care that much about air bubble cells, so it's not a big deal for me whether there are a few. Let me pour a little bit more on. I'm pretty much gonna swipe kind of on this center area and then I will tilt. So I'll use the rest of the white that I need to help it cover all the way across. So Molly does her swipes in a couple of different ways. Sometimes she layers her colors like this and then she swipes it this way so that every color kind of crosses over each other. But you can also do it with stripes of color and then you swipe along with those stripes and so you end up having kind of ribbons of color and I really like that look. So I'm gonna do kind of a mixture of those two looks. Uh, so we're gonna have one primary river running here through, through the middle. but I don't want it to be totally like all the same. So they're gonna cross over and squiggle just a little bit. But I do think I want every color 
in every ribbon. Payne's gray, because it adds a nice contrast, but the other great thing about it is that it provides a nice dark color that the interference pigment, this velvet, can be laid on top of because the velvet shines blue, particularly on a dark base. So you have to have either a dark base color or a dark color that you layer it on top of. Otherwise, it's not really gonna show up. Wonderful. And I think the last one is this pearlized dark green. Great, okay, I like that stripe of color. I like how it's not it's not totally even. There should be some crossover and blending of colors. So that's gonna run all the way across. Then I think I'm gonna have a little pocket of colors that I'll swipe kind of through going this way and one coming this way. Don't know how that's gonna end up looking, but I think it'll be fun. So I'm gonna layer these slightly differently and these will be more like not a, not a round puddle, but not exactly even stripes. This time we'll finish up with that lighter metallic green. Okay, so that one will be swiped this way. And then I want one up here. Not sure why my thing is spinning. That's strange. There must be something where the weight just isn't evenly distributed. Okay, so these two side swipes, side puddles, are layered pretty much the same, and they're not that different from the middle, but it just, it has a different set of colors on the top. And I don't know why this is turning. It's a little strange. But it doesn't matter. Uh, let me see if I can pop some of these air bubbles now. There we go, now they're popping. Definitely don't want to scorch our paint, but we also want to get rid of those air bubbles if we can. Okay, so for the first swipe, it's going to basically follow this river across. And then based on how that's looking, these ones might come in and almost touch it and then swoop away. I don't know. I, for this, it's kind of an intuitive feel it out in the moment kind of an action. But my cell activator is Amsterdam Black mixed with Australian Floetrol. Um, you can use just Amsterdam Black paint and water. If you wanna see how Amsterdam paint and water works as a cell activator, you can find that link in the video description. I think that's too much paint. I just want a pretty thin layer of cell activator here. Okay, this is how it wants to be. This is funny. It does not like being this way, but I'm gonna swipe this direction anyway. All right, let's go ahead and swipe. So I'm gonna to touch it gently. And then nice and slowly. All the way across. Okay, we've got some, some cells coming up. Not a ton popping up here actually, which is interesting. I think if we give it time, they'll come up. I might have had too much cell activator. It's, it's getting quite gray there over the white, but I see the velvet, that blue popping up there, so that's beautiful. All right, let me do it again. For this one, I'm gonna swipe in this way and around, but I'll use a little less cell activator because I don't want to overpower it. Here we go. Ooh, that one is pretty. Ooh, yeah, I love all the black in there. Because over here it gets kind of weak and faded, but this is, this is gorgeous. 
All right, so I'm gonna keep this one very tight in here because I can already tell this is the section that I wanna save. I don't really care about this. So as I do this one, I'm just gonna keep it, keep it close by in here. My spinner is saying, no, you're gonna do it the other direction. No, I'm really, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, here we go. Cool. Those are so pretty. I love the contrast of the dark cell activator on that light base. It's gorgeous. And all the bright, bright colors, earthy colors, but also with the pops of pink. It's really nice. Okay, what I need to figure out is right where the swipes started. I'm just gonna clean those up a little bit. If I wanted, I could add some swirls, but for the most part, these are nice and clean. So I don't think I want to add swirls. And certain things could be touched up after it's dry, if necessary. Actually, I like this a lot, so I'm not gonna do a lot of tweaking. Cool. Let me torch again. So I think I'm gonna tilt by hand for a while, and then once I have the composition right, then I will spin to stretch. This is so pretty, I love the velvet. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna pick this up. And I don't wanna stretch real hard because I don't want to warp what I've gotten. But what I want to do is kind of move the paint further off the side here so that we only keep the parts that I really like. Yeah. I think we've already kind of done that. And now I can bring it back Get it centered. Right. I'm gonna add a little bit of white along here, even though I know it's gonna go off the edge. I just wanna help kind of pull the rest of the paint along, make it easier for it all to cover. Okay. Yeah, I like this. I'm actually, I'm gonna put it slightly, slightly off center for the spin to try to get a little bit more of it to go this way. Uh, but I may, I may change that, we'll see. All right, let's give it a gentle spin. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so it's definitely stretching out. Beautiful. I love all the cells. Yeah, I'm gonna keep stretching. We'll see, we'll see how far it ends up pulling, pulling over the sides. You know, there's a lot of areas that I don't want to lose, but on the other hand, blowing it up nice and big, you know, really stretching it out um, could look very nice as well. So I'll just keep spinning. I just sent it off center.
Okay, so we've lost the edge here, which is great. It's looking so pretty. I do still feel like this is better than this. So I'm gonna pull it a little bit that way and just keep slowly spinning. This is also helping to thin down the layer of paint on the surface, which means it'll be less likely to crack. I'm starting to lose my swoops off the edge, which I don't know that I want to. Of course, it would look good if this was able to shift off the edge a little. It's always tricky because you're like, I want to lose this part, but not this part. But I do think it would actually help if the, the beginnings of both of these swipes ended up off of the round. So let me torch again. And spin one more time just a nice gentle one until I really like how it looks we're almost there over here <laughs> almost there let me see if I can Nudge it. There we go. Now it'll flow. Okay. So this little green section right here, I'm going to try to touch my finger in there and remove that. There we go. Much less distracting. I wish the start of this swipe right here was a little bit cleaner, but there's not much that I can do about that right now. But I do like that these other ones that they go off the side now so it doesn't look quite so like here it is in the middle of the white background, but we do still see the swooping so I like it. I wish we had more of this lacing over here, but it looks cool anyway. I'm going to torch one more time, and then I think it's time for a close-up. Okay, here it is. Of course, this is the way that I like it, but the spinner is wanting to turn it. So let me show you those gorgeous cells that we've got. You see that bluish? That's going to be the velvet. It's going to shine when this is dry. Man, you get extra action from the rotation here. Fancy. Oh, I love that section there with those cells. Nice coppery swoosh there. And then here, that other one. Nice pop of pink. I love that sort of green and pink section right there. Yeah, my spinner apparently thinks that this is how it should be. <laughs> but I get to make that decision. All right, we're going to let this dry, and I will show you how it looks when it's dry. Okay, it's dry. So this dried really well and also not so well at the same time. It dried well in that the design did not warp. All those cells stayed absolutely luscious. Really beautiful. Nothing shifted awkwardly, so that's good. The bad part is you can see the texture air bubbles or other bubbles of gas that were trapped inside of the wood have come up into the paint and made those little like pimples you know little bumps all over so that's not from air bubbles in the paint that's from air inside the porous wood and i thought that by priming it i had eliminated that problem but i guess i didn't put a good enough coat of primer on it and so we have those bubbles which is a bummer 
But from this angle, you can also see those metallics shining beautifully, especially that velvet, the blue is gorgeous, but also the copper, that metallic green. So it's really, really nice there. That's just an imperfection in the wood itself, not in the pour. So the color blend is amazing. I love how the cells formed, but I need to figure out what to do because I was going to put a resin coat on this tabletop. And the nice thing about resin is that it dries perfectly flat. So you wouldn't be able to feel the texture, but I have a feeling that underneath the resin, especially from an angle like this, I think you'd be able to see the texture. So what I need to decide is, do I finish this tabletop with resin as it is, or do I sand off this layer of paint, get it all smooth again, maybe put on another coat of primer, and then paint it again in basically the same design, though a little bit different. Because if I did it again, what I love is these two secondary swoops. I love how dramatic they are. This one in the middle is just a little bit boring. So if I did it again, I would probably only have two swoops and they would both be very curved instead of straight. So I don't know, help me decide. Should I resin it as is, or should I redo it? Thank you all for joining me for this swipe tabletop video in the style of Molly's artistry. I hope it inspired you to try something new, even just a new color palette, perhaps. I really, really like this one. Let me know if you think I should keep this or redo it. I'm undecided myself. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.